Welcome to another free art lesson. I'm Tom Jones. I have another surprise for you. I'm going to show you how to create canyon scenes. This is going to be fairly interesting, I hope, for you. I'm going to do some canyons in the distance that are going to be a sort of a warmer color in sunlight, and then we're going to have one that's closer to us that's going to be a little darker, and we'll create a little effect of light as we go along here as well, so you'll get to see the whole picture. Now, let me go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to start with my lighter colors. I'm going to mix up some colors in my palette, and I'll show you what colors we're going to use. And I'm going to start in this particular area of the painting where I want some nice light. What that means is this. I'm going to leave that area pretty much a very light value, very warm value, so that there's a strong effect of light when I wind up putting this darker uh, canyon in. So stick with me, and you're going to see this all unfold for you. I'm going to start with some nice bright yellow. I'm using, in this case, a lemon yellow. So I'm going to mix up some nice lemon yellow. Now let me re remind you that it's important that you make sure that your yellow is nice and bright and fresh. Yellow is one of those colors in your palette that will get dirty pretty quickly. So you have to be very careful to make sure your palette's nice and clean, your brush is clean, the water's clean, and then go grab some of that nice fresh yellow and mix it up in your palette. It's very important that it be fresh and bright. I'm going to start in this area of the painting with some nice bright yellow. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm even going to put a little yellow on this darker canyon. Even though we're going to come back later and make it darker, some of that bright yellow is going to glow through there and create a nice interesting look for us. So here's what I want to do. I want to come in, clean out my brush now, and just soften some of this yellow. And I'm going to just kind of move it slowly over toward this area. I hope you can see there's a line right there. That's the edge of the for forward canyon. But what I'm doing now is I'm putting some of this yellow out and I'm pulling some of that color up here, but I'm going to leave this area white. It's a good time to have a tissue in your hand and just pick up any excess color. I can always come back and add more color if I want, but I want to keep that area nice and bright. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and mix some more color. In this case, I'm going to pick up some of my light red. This is sort of an orangey red, my light red. And I'm going to start introducing this orangey red or this light red into my uh, scene here with the particular canyons. There are two canyons here. I'm going to paint them both at the same time, and then we'll separate them later. Now what I'll do is I'll come back in, and I'm going to get another red. I'm going to go back into a, oh, a little darker red. But I want to keep this nice and bright and nice and light. I don't want to get too dark on these particular canyons here. I may even throw some more yellow in there just to lighten it a little bit more. I can always darken it later. I'm going to pick up some of the excess color here with my brush, like so, and then I'll continue along. Now what I'll do is I may take a little bit of, uh, oh, maybe a little bit of my sienna color. And I'm just going to introduce just a little bit of that in there, but I'm not going to get too dark with it. I'll come in and introduce darks a little bit later. But right now, I just want to put in a beautiful color. What am I looking for? I'm looking for light, warm, interesting, exciting Southwest colors. That's what I'm looking for at this point. Just keep adding a little more color to it. Make it interesting. And I've got enough color on the paper. I can just finish like so. Just finish out that area that I need to paint over here. See how I've left this nice and light here? As I go away from that area, it gets a little darker, a little darker, and a little darker but this area is remaining nice and light right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come in and I'm going to paint this area dark. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to re-identify this particular area for you and then I'll identify that area. What do I mean by identify? I'm simply going to add some darks, lift out some color, create the textures that you see in canyon scenes. That's exactly what I'm going to do here and here. But first of all, I want to go ahead and put the darks in here right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some interesting darks. In this case, I'll take a little bit of my Prussian blue. I'll add into the Prussian blue maybe a little touch of my uh, permanent red deep, which is my not my darkest red, but sort of that middle red. My darkest red would probably be my rose color. But anyway, I've got a nice, interesting dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this dark up here. I'm going to stop at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change color now. I don't want all one color going throughout the entire painting. So I'll come back and maybe pick up a little more of the rose color and add just a touch of rose. Now I'll come back, change color again. I'll pick up just some of that really dark Prussian blue and just add a little bit of touch, a little touch of that Prussian blue in there. 
So I'm changing color often. See that? I may even want to surprise you. Maybe come in and pick up just a touch of green just to see how that would look in there. That looks interesting. Not too much green. We want to keep the colors fairly warm, but just as an accent color. Uh, maybe I'll pick up a little cerulean blue, have a little fun with that in there. So I'm moving along, and I'm going to just change colors again. Notice how I'm changing colors often here. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my uh, permanent red deep, and maybe I'll add just a touch of that in there to warm it up just a little bit more. So I'm having a little fun with that. I'll come back in and, uh, oh, maybe I'll pick up some of my turquoise blue. That's a nice, rich, dark color. And we'll see how that plays out in the particular painting. We'll come back again, pick up some more of our dark blue, our Prussian blue again. And we'll add a little bit more of the Prussian blue to this. See how we're doing this, how we're changing colors? More interesting to have a color change going on than to have one solid color. I'll come in and I'll throw in a little bit of my uh, sienna color. We'll have a little fun with that particular color in there. We'll take and add uh, maybe a little bit of our chronoquidone rose to the, to the sienna color and see how that looks in there. Just having a lot of fun with these particular colors now. Come back to my Prussian blue. Whatever you do, just think in terms of changing the color to make this more interesting than just a solid wall of one color. Try not to get caught into that trap. All right, a little more red. We'll paint this on out. We're almost done with it now. Pack maybe just a little more touch of the, uh, the turquoise blue. We'll just throw a little bit of that in there again. Come back, back to my dark blue again, my Prussian blue. Have a little fun with that. See how simple that is? Now there's a couple more rocks down in here. And what I want to do is I want to make sure I paint those as well. Now I got a little spot of paint there. You may not be able to see it, but I can. I want to get it out of there because I want that area to be nice and bright in that particular spot area. I'm going to come back now. I'm going to grab my uh, uh, smaller brush, my three-quarter inch brush. I'm going to mix a little bit of my ultramarine blue deep, a little bit of my red. I'll throw a little Prussian in there, just the Prussian blue to darken it just a little bit more. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we'll, we'll paint these rocks here. It might be a little too dark, so we'll add a little more red back into the color there, just to brighten it up just a little bit more. So there's some area of rocks that Oh, have fallen down off of this canyon, I suppose. You make up your own story on how they got there, but let's not worry about how that happened right now. Let's just worry about getting some interesting color out here. That's what we're looking for. Now, what I need to do at this point is I need to dry this particular area here and this area here. Then I'm going to come back in. I'm going to start creating a shape for these particular canyons and the shape for this particular canyon, and that will conclude this lesson plan. But stay with me because this is going to be a fun one to see. Let me go ahead and dry it for you. Hi. Now, as you saw, I took some time to dry this particular scene. Let me explain a little bit to you on hair dryer. I think this is a good point to reference this. Typically, when you're in this situation where I'm on film, I'm using a hair dryer to speed up the process. But in my studio, I typically would not use a hair dryer. And let me explain why. The choice is obviously yours, but the reason I don't is because when you have wet paper or wet color on your paper and you're using a hair dryer, if you're not careful, you're pushing color around on your paper unwantedly and it can create some blotchiness in certain areas where you're pushing the color around. So typically in the studio, I don't use a hair dryer. I use it in workshop scenes and in this scene simply to speed up the process. The choice is yours. You can do it either way. Fair enough? Fair enough. Now, let me get back to my painting process here. I want to show you how I would identify these particular canyons. I've got one here. You may be able to see the pencil line and then one behind it. And I want to separate those two. Then I also want to show you how to identify this. So let me get started. In this case, I'm going to take my three-quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to do or paint this particular scene up here a little darker. But before I do that, I want to identify this canyon area back here. So I'm going to pick up some nice interesting darks and we're going to assume since this is the lighter side over here, this is our light source, that the dark side would be on this back side of this canyon right here as you can see. So let's let's approach it from that from that uh, standpoint. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating what basically is uh, all the ridges or the dark side or shadow side uh, of the uh, canyon on this side. Now, Keep in mind that these canyons are not smooth. There's a lot of texture going on. 
So on this side over here, let's take where it's in shadow, let's take and darken this side over here a little bit. We'll come in and put a little more shadow side to there. Same thing over here, just a little bit of a shadow side to that particular canyon. Now notice how I'm holding my brush. I'm holding my brush sort of on a three-quarter angle and I'm using the tip, this particular corner of my brush, and I'm dragging that color down to create the look of texture. See how simply that's done? Very easily. Same thing over here. Just simply drag that color down. But notice how all of a sudden we're starting to get the texture that we want in this particular canyon scene. We'll just continue along, do a couple of more areas, like so. Be very careful, don't overdo it. And that's how this canyon scene can very easily be created. I'll just drag a few brush strokes across there in a dry brush effect to create a little texture. See how I've done that? Don't get carried away too much because we want to keep this nice and bright over here and this side over here. Let me add just a little more excitement to this particular canyon. Here we'll add a little bit more bright color. I've used my uh, light red, my uh, permanent red light. I'll throw a little bit of orange in there and all of a sudden we've got a nice warm canyon starting to come alive over here. We'll do the same thing on this area up here. We'll pick up a little bit of our orange, red, and yellow and we'll add a little more excitement to the canyon over here. We'll exaggerate the color, in other words. See how interesting that becomes? Now let's go back. We'll add just a little more yellow to this area here. I want to keep this more of a light yellow over here, keep the reds for further away from, from this area here. All right, just again, just water on my brush at this point, and we'll soften a little bit of that area. We'll take a little bit of our tissue pick up any excess color that we don't need and see how all of a sudden how we've got this interesting darker color going on here. How much more interesting that canyon has become than it was before. Now I've got another canyon in front here. So what I want to do is I may want to make this canyon a little bit darker. So I'm going to take some of my lighter red and uh, oh a touch of uh, maybe my uh, some of my sienna color let's say that would work. And we'll come in here and see if we can't make this canyon a little bit darker, but still make it exciting. Maybe not dark enough, so let's try it again. We'll come in and make this side a little darker over here. See how this is a little darker now than this particular canyon back here? And that helps separate that canyon. We don't have to do it everywhere, but certainly at the top edge so that it separates the canyon that's in front from the canyon that's in the back. Pick up a little excess color back there. I'm using some of the colors that are in my palette. What are the colors? It's a little bit of my ultramarine blue deep mixture, a little bit of my uh, quinacridone rose mixture, a little bit of my dark rose, uh, a little bit of my light uh, or my dark red, a little bit of my light red. It's sort of that mixture that kind of gives you this sort of brownish look to it. Now as I get closer to this area again, I want to warm it up a little bit so I'll get a little bit more of my my uh, light red, permanent red light. We'll warm this up just a little bit over here. And again, now I'll take my brush and just drag some of that color down to create the illusion that there's some crevices and dark side to the, to the uh, canyons and some lighter side to the canyon. Now I'll go back to my yellow again. We'll pick up a little yellow. We'll get maybe a little yellow going here. We'll add a little bit of, uh, of our light red in there just to darken that just a little bit, again, to separate the forward canyon from the distant canyon. Pick up a little bit of our color there. Again, keeping this area light over here. I'll pick up a little tissue. We'll soften a little bit of this area again, keeping this area nice and light here where the sunlight's coming in. Now keep in mind that when sunlight is hitting things directly with a lot of uh, brightness and impact, a lot of the edges disappear. So the edges of this canyon would be uh, fused, the colors all fuse and they disappear. If you don't believe that, just look out into the bright sunlight sometime after you've come out of a dark building and all the edges are fused together. That's what we're looking for here. And you, you get these wonderful effects of sun like that in the southwest. Now, let's turn our attention over to this particular canyon here. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to lift out a little color, meaning I'm going to put water on my brush. I'm going to paint that water in and lift it off by using a tissue to just rub it. Then we're going to add back in some darks to that area to kind of create a little bit of a textured look to the side of the canyon. So let's 
Let's start with uh, just water on my brush. So I'm cleaning out my brush. I've got a tissue ready, so I have a, a damp brush. Watch what happens now. I'm going to come in and I'm going to create the illusion of some crevices in this particular canyon area. See how I'm just dragging that brush down, like so. Then I'll take my tissue and I'll pat that area. See how I've done that? I'll just pat the area and get that out of the way. And I'll take and just drag that tissue across there and I've created some highlights into the canyon area. I'll do it in a couple more areas. And then I'll add some dark back in here and you'll see some highlights happening. I'm going to go down to my number um, eight round brush. I'm going to mix up a little bit of my Prussian blue, a little bit of my uh, uh, turquoise blue, and I'll throw just a touch of my uh, quinacridone rose in there. And then we'll come in and we'll add just a couple of areas that are darker just to get a little contrast between the light and the dark as far as the crevices. A couple of more areas. I'll add just a little bit of my uh, sienna to the mix over here just to get a little uh, warmer color in a couple of areas. And all of a sudden we got the look of light areas and dark areas in this particular canyon scene. So there are highlights. It's sort of like when you're doing a portrait painting for portrait painters. Uh, they'll have the chin and the nose and the cheekbones and the eyelids or the eyebrows, they're forward on the face so they would appear to be lighter. What's recessed, the eye sockets under the nose, under the, ch under the lip, under the chin would be darker because it's recessed. All objects appear that way when there's light around. So there are some parts of the canyon that would be forward and some parts of that canyon that would be recessed. So the light area shows those parts of the canyons that are forward. So that's the effect we're looking for. A few more of these brush strokes. Don't get carried away. A couple of things also that I would mention to you is be very careful uh, not to have your lines going straight down so it looks like you just have um, a straight line coming down. They should be sort of on an angle and uh, irregular to make it look more realistic. One of the recommendations that I would uh, uh, give to you is that uh, get a, a couple of uh, good photographs from a magazine on desert scenes with the canyons. You can get them anywhere. You can get them at bookstores and magazine stores and so forth. And that will kind of give you the idea of how these particular canyons would look. A little dark to this side over here. Maybe a little bit more lifting of color up here on this side. And all of a sudden, you've got an interesting canyon scene a little more dark in a couple areas. Now typically we'd finish this out with more rocks down in this area or maybe some water and so forth, but that's an easy way to paint a canyon scene. I hope you've had a lot of fun with this. I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to add just a few more darks in here and just punch this up just a little bit more and all of a sudden it becomes even more exciting. It adds a little more contrast to it. See how all of a sudden those darks are starting to work magic. Sometimes when your painting dries, uh, the painting will dry a little lighter than you want it uh, to be, so you'll have to come back in and add some of these darks to get back to the darks that you initially thought you had there. So that's exactly what I've done there. Now look at the contrast now of the light and the dark. Look over here where this forward canyon is forward and the light and the sunlight is behind that particular canyon. This is an easy way to paint a canyon scene. Again, practice this. Uh, practice makes perfect, as they say. Thanks again for joining me. I hope to see you again soon. My name is Tom Jones. Goodbye for now.